Welcome to With the First Pick. I'm Ryan Wilson, and today we have a very special guest, Troy Faltanu, formerly a Washington Husky, currently uh, waiting to find out his fate in the NFL. He's going to be a first-round pick all day long. Troy, I know you've been extremely busy. Thank you for a few minutes. Uh, you came early, which uh, I would pass along to teams to let them know that you're punctual and you take this seriously. How are you doing with 13 days to go here? You know, I'm doing well, man. I'm just trying to take it day by day. Uh, for me, it's I'm kind of just ready to go, but, you know, uh, I've been told many, many times to just trust the process and um, it, it'll all be worth it. It'll be all the worth the wait once uh, the 25th comes around. So, yeah, it's funny because your whole athletic career has been, you've been able to control it because you, uh, you're the person playing the position and now you're being told to, to wait. It's out of your control. You don't know where you're yeah. going to end up. You've had all these meetings. You've talked to all these teams. You've gone through the process, the pre-draft process, and the combine. So how, how do you, uh, outside of working out, how do you, you, you kill time and not keep your mind on the things you can't control in terms of the, what the draft's going to look like? Yeah, so uh, fortunate enough, you know, I've, I've had a couple of visits. So it's, that's been kind of uh, preoccupying the most of my time and uh, having a couple of calls here and there with with a bunch of coaches. But other than that, like, I've been playing a lot of video games, man. Like <laughs> I've probably worn out this controller these past couple months just because I have so much free time. But other than that, I mean, other than working out and kind of trying to stay busy in that in that way, um, I mean, I play the game, I talk to my girlfriend a whole bunch, talk to my family. Uh, th this period of time was is really big for me to kind of just reconnect back with my family because I feel like these past couple of years, you know, uh, being in college, it's, you know, I kind of got away from that, you know, but uh, I've had a lot of free time to, to reach out to people that I usually don't. And um, it's been awesome. So. All right. Uh, Producer Debo has a question that he wants me to ask you since you're a gamer. What, what's, uh, what's your Madden rating going to be? <laughs> Hopefully I, I, you know, I'm not in the fifties. Hopefully I'm not in the fifties. Uh, you won't be in the fifties based on know, the way you played in Washington. I know how it goes. I know how the whole rookie thing goes. So I'm just hoping, you know, it's it's somewhat mid 60s, something like that. I nah. really don't care to be honest, but we'll you're see. You're selling yourself short. You, you you're gonna be you're gonna be top shelf from the start. So when I uh, I do a podcast with Rick Spielman, who used to be the Vikings general manager for 10 years, and we were talking about you back in September, October. Uh, because your team was really good, but also because you were balling out. I remember watching you thinking, okay, this guy must play basketball in his background. So I went and looked. You're a volleyball guy. So how did you get how did you get to volleyball? And I would imagine you you were the first guy off the bus uh, at the volleyball games too, just to send a message. And yeah. how does that translate to what you do uh, along the offensive line? To be honest, um, so my parents, they both played volleyball okay. uh, growing up. And my little sister plays volleyball. So it's always been in my family. Um, it was, it was the springtime, it was a springtime sport. So I kind of just decided to, you know, join it. Might as well, uh, do something in the off season. Um, some of the coaches there wanted me to do track throw and stuff yeah. like that, but I wanted to play volleyball. I wanted to be different. Um, and, uh, the freshman coach, the freshman volleyball coach was actually our D line coach, uh, for football. So he kind of, um, inspired me to come in and, and try it out. And uh, eventually I, I didn't play freshman, uh, on the freshman team, my freshman year, I played JV, but, um, it, it was it was awesome, man. That that experience is something I'll never trade. Um, I, I love the sport, um, but you know there was some college coaches reaching out about it. But uh, my coaches told them that I was a football player <laughs> through and through. I just did it for fun. It was just funny because I, I would go out there and um, not to be cocky, but like I would dominate out there. But like a lot of these guys took it serious. But for me, it was just another way to just get out there and be active. Uh, but honestly, it, it, I feel like it did help a lot, um, especially when it came to just like being explosive and. Yeah. Uh, moving laterally and um, it's, it's a team sport. So, I mean, uh, just like football, anything, uh, nothing works if, if one guy's off and just trying to communicate in that way. I felt like I brought another uh, aspect to my teammates, you know, being able to be competitive out there, maybe sometimes too competitive uh, because uh, playing offensive line and playing volleyball are two different <laughs> things. So sometimes, you know, I, I would uh, get a little too aggressive or, or talk a little bit too much for, for some of these volleyball guys likings, but you know, it, it was, it was awesome. And um, yeah, like I said before, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love it. And no one's talking back to you either. You can flap your gums on the volleyball court. Yeah. I imagine <laughs> um, there, there was a couple guys that were like super good, like went to like some division one colleges that yeah. were, they weren't talking, but yeah, I, you know, I respected them a little bit more <laughs> from game time. Cause at the end of the day, I'm a competitor, man. And I wanted yeah. to go out there and compete. So. Oh, I love it. I love the visual. I haven't seen any. I'm sure there's some YouTube clips of you out there just, just slamming on people. Uh, My mom's I, got all of them. My mom's I, got it all unlocked <laughs> up on the phone. So we talked, we want to talk to you. The combine, the schedules didn't work out, but we talked to your teammate, 
Michael Penix Jr. and Roma Dunze, two great dudes. Rome played in Nevada. You played mm-hmm. in Nevada. You played just outside of Vegas. Is that correct? Yeah, Henderson. So did you know who Rome was and how good – because they had some dudes on that team as well. Did you guys cross paths in high school? Uh, no, not – like I never talked to him ever in high school, but, I mean, just knowing of him just because we I faced him my senior year uh, and my junior year, I think. But I remember him uh, my my senior year playing against him, but never never really talked to him too much until I got to UW. Was he a dude in high school? Yeah, he was, man. From what I've seen – <laughs> uh, I I got to go back. I, I was fortunate enough to go back my uh, my freshman year of college and watch his senior year, the state game, um, well, the game to go to state, I think. Um, and uh, we had never beat Gorman before. And that was the, uh, if you ask Rome, if you run into him, tell him about that. Tell him, I, you know, I'll never forget that moment. I, I didn't get to beat him, but I was there to witness. Uh, you you know, laid the, the groundwork. Yeah, and then they they finished the job. So 2020, yeah. that year, Liberty High School, they finished the job. And, um, yeah, I mean, just going into the game, you know, he was the guy that everyone was talking about. And um, still to this day, you know, he, he proves it every single day and every single Saturday. And uh, he's a guy for sure. Same with Mike. Let me ask you about, about Mike because um, I mentioned we talked to him in the combine as well. And a lot of things you hear as you go through the draft process, uh, whether it's from teams or in the media, is that you got to go back to the tape and trust what you see. Every time I watch Michael Penix Jr. on tape, in large part because of some of the things that you guys did on the offensive line, he is throwing lasers. And I think his uh, athleticism was undervalued because of the injuries. We saw how real, well he did it in his pro day. Mm-hmm. I, I thought he's really good at, at avoiding pressure and then making off-platform throws. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you explain to me why anyone would think that Michael Penix Jr. is not a first-round pick? Because I'm having yeah. trouble figuring that out. Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm I'm biased, of course, but at the same time, looking from an outsider point of view, I mean, I just don't know what's not attractive about the way he plays the game of football. And just him as a person, especially, like I got to know him a little bit more uh, the year from 2022 to 2023 because, you know, it felt like he kind of got out of his shell and um, started to talk a little bit more because he's, he's naturally a quiet guy just right. from what I've seen. Uh, but, man, I don't know. Like, it still confuses me to this day. Um on why people don't think he's the best quarterback in this draft. And I, I don't know. Like, I just think he can do everything, man. And uh, like you said, a lot of people slipped on his, um, his athletic ability, but I, I seen it firsthand. Uh, there was a couple of guys, a couple of the receivers, honestly, I'm not going to name any names, but, <laughs> and Mike, they went outside one day. It was like during the winter, I think of 23 and they raced hundred yards and he won. And at, from that day on, I was like, yeah, this guy. I can't believe you called out Jalen McMillan like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no names, no names. I'm not going to call anybody out. But I'm kidding. The, the I don't know who it is there, either. The guys that were there, they know. They know. Yeah, they seen it. Yeah. My, my teammate, my Roger Rosengard, he was there as well. So another, have, there's another witness. An, another, another great witness. player, too, by the way. Like, that's yeah. the thing. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about the wide receivers and, and Michael Penix Jr., of course, but Roger on the right side, you on the left side, you guys held it down throughout the season, and both you players are so much fun to watch. Um, one thing one thing I wanted to mention, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but I was I went back and watched some of the pressures you allowed this morning just to, just to refresh my memory, and mm-hmm. the USC one sticks out, not because you gave him a pressure, no big deal, but that was a play that reminded me of how good Michael Penix Jr. is. I think he got beat yeah. in the B-gap, and he avoided pressure, rolled to his left, and threw a laser – into the back of the end zone. Do you remember that play? Mm-hmm. Yep. So how are we Left talking about Michael Penix Jr. and not talking about the things that he does so consistently? It, it just – it's crazy to me, and I was glad that I got to see that play again just because of the, his ability to make off-platform. Yeah, play. and that's the thing. Like, Mike – like, you know, we look at a lot of the numbers with how many sacks we've given up and that – this and that, and and a lot of that is put on the old line, but Mike gets us out of situations as well. That's yeah. the thing. Like, his pocket presence and the his ability to kind of navigate through the pocket – especially when we're not uh, say we, you know, get beat one play and it's going to happen. It's football. Like no, no one's perfect. A a game's never going to go perfect, but uh, that that's what um, is so special about Mike. I feel is that um, not only can he throw dots off his back foot or or however you guys talk in the quarterback room or, uh, but (laughs) man, he, he, he he can run when he, when he, when he wants to. And that's, that's what's special about him when he wants to and when he needs to, he's, he's really big on, you know, just getting the, the ball to the receivers and letting them run. But, um, I mean, he showcased his ability to run on pro day. So 
I'm super yeah. excited for him. So, and again, you you guys had a lot to do with his success. The way you guys played up front. Uh, I mentioned Rick Spielman, uh, my my co-host on the on the podcast earlier. He's traveling right now, so he's not here. He's old school. He was in the NFL for thirty plus years, and he he loves your game, Troy. But one of the, and this is how Rick is, and, and producer Debo can attest to this. One of the first things he noticed a, as we were talking about you on the podcast last fall, he goes, "Wait a second." Why is he wearing shorts out there? I need my offensive lineman to wear long pants and knee pads. So I got to ask on Rick's behalf. I, I think it look, makes you look pretty sleek, and you, you, it looks like you're moving faster than maybe uh, you you are pretty fast yeah. anyway. What's your what's your idea with the with the shorts? So I can give Rick an answer. To be honest, it's hard. <laughs> it, it's I wouldn't say it's hard, but it's a it's a lot easier to move around when your knees aren't covered and uh, the, the those pants, the Adidas uniforms, man, they're, they're very tight and they're not meant for guys like me. And, uh, <laughs> Those things, when they're around your knees, it, it, if I wouldn't say they restrict your ability to move, but it feels like yeah, it's restricting it. So if, if a ref's going to let me get away with it, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? So oh, is that a uniform uh, violation? You know, I've, I've you know I wore my shirt up. You know, I've done I've done it all. And uh, some refs, you know, they're 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 a lot stricter than others. Okay. Uh, but you know, some most of the time they just let me do whatever. I uh, like it. Yeah. And you, you play fast anyway, so I'm not going to ask you to change. Have, have any teams asked you about that, or is that just a Rick yeah, thing? Yeah. Oh, they have? No, it, yeah, they have. A lot of teams have. Like, so <laughs> so why, why are you wearing biker shorts out there? Or they're like, like, why are you rolling your shirt up? Like, does this jersey not fit? No, the jersey fits. It just is super tight. So, oh, so you, you've answered this question a thousand times. Yeah. All, right. All those old school guys like Rick. Um, oh, the other thing I want to mention uh, as I go through the notes here, and we talked about we talked with Layatu Latu the combine, another great guy. But you, Puka, and Trent and Layatu were all at Washington together. Is that right? Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, yeah. Did you have any sense watching Puka and uh, Trent? Obviously, he was he's been good in college, and obviously that transferred. Uh, but Puka Nakua, I think the thing with him, he battled health. Re- I mean, that's mm-hmm. one of the reasons that perhaps he slipped. But could you see at the time that he had a chance to be special? Oh, yeah. I mean, just coming out of high school, too. I mean, just seeing the stuff that he would do in high school. And then um, and then when he got to UW, it was, you know, like not a lot of freshmen play at UW, like true freshmen, especially at the time. And his ability to, um, you know, get reps uh, through. There was a lot of uh, seniority on our team and um, a lot of older guys. But, you know, he he was always he's always been special, man. I, I knew he was. Uh, gonna be great you know what i mean i was actually on the game with him last night we were, we were oh, playing nice. the game and, yeah uh, but yeah man i'm just so happy for him and, and uh, i'm just happy that he was able to showcase what we all believe that he could do especially with Latu too and um trent man yeah trent's probably the best football player i think i ever stepped the field wow you know? yeah uh, he just ever since day one like going back to like what i said you know he's not a lot of freshmen do play at uw just because i feel like um we're they were very big on um letting guys develop, but yeah. he was already one of those guys that just stepped foot on campus and was just a guy. And, you know, we got to see that firsthand. And, you know, like I said, all these guys that were in our class, there, there's a lot of us, man. And um, I, I wish we were able to keep the the whole team together this past year, especially going into the natty, but you know, everything happens for a reason. So I'm, I'm just super excited for all of them. To yeah. Be well, you're about to follow in their footsteps, given the way that, that your career played out at, at Washington. It's been a ton, ton to watch. Uh, is it, is there, I'll, I'll, Start this way. We talked to Byron Murphy out of Texas. You faced him. Mm-hmm. We talked to him at the uh, combine and asked him who was the toughest interior D- offensive lineman he faced last season. And he said, "I'll be honest with you. I, I everyone I faced, I, I felt like I did pretty well against, which is true yeah. when you watch Byron play. Was there anyone that you went up against outside, or even any interior defensive linemen that were playing outside that you struggle with, or that you had to bring your A game because you were surprised at how good they were?" Um, I would say going back to that USC game that we talked about earlier, Solomon yeah. Bird, he was he was yeah. a he was a pretty good player, man. And uh when he came to pass to us, he was he was really good at uh, setting up his moves, that spin move got me twice. Um and then I would just say overall game, um I, I got to play this player twice. Um uh, Brandon Dorless from Oregon. I, I would just say he's he's just a complete player. And you know, he played a lot of inside and and outside. He had to play a little bit more outside. In that he's second a tweener game, too. He's a little bigger. Yeah, but man, he, he he moves really well. Like he he's got enough strength to run through your face, but at the same time, <laughs> he's got a deep enough bag in his pass rush yeah. to get around you, you know, and do all the finesse stuff. But but yeah, I would say props to him, man. He he was another player that um, you know, I, I studied a lot, especially going into that first and oh, going to both games. But um, we yeah, we matched up a little bit more in the second one for sure. 
So. Yeah, and that was fun to watch. I enjoyed watching that for, for both both the players, both you and, and Brandon. And again, he's a great player, and you obviously had a lot of wins in those matchups. And again, that's why you're one of the best players in this draft class. Let me ask you this: Who are the top three defensive guys you're looking forward to facing next year? I mean, just naming off the top players: uh, T.J. Watt, Michael Parsons, Miles Garrett. Just all the top guys, man. You know, you don't really see that see those type of guys too often. So <laughs> nah, you uh, hope not. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, it's for sure going to be you know a little bit more preparation, I guess, going into those games. But uh, man, just the I feel like anyone in the NFL, like that's for me, my mindset, anyone is, is at that level is, is top tier and is, is great. Like even guys that, um, cause like you don't get to go into a game like and not prepare the same way you prepare for another guy. Everyone in the NFL is good. So I think that's one thing that I'm super excited about because I feel like it's just going to elevate my game for sure. Um, just being able to go against guys like that and prepare and, and know how to prepare. Cause you know, you, you play the same guy, you, you play those guys every single year. So, yeah, well, that's one of the the great things about your game, at least as I've watched you and Rick and I've talked about this, is that you're incredibly athletic, you're incredibly stout at the point. So, these, those are the things that NFL teams are looking for to counteract what those yeah. edge rushers bring you. So, that's, I think that's what makes you special. But you don't need to hear that from me. Let me ask you this. And um, I talked to Leatu about this, and I wonder if you guys have the same answer. Who's your football goat all time? Any position, your favorite player? That you enjoy football what? goat, yeah. Probably Trent Williams. Oh, nice. To be honest, so well, they have to go ahead. The, the, the O line route, but yeah. Um, I mean, the, I think the goat is Tom Brady. <laughs> we got so, a lot of Tom Brady, and yeah. Leatu was interesting because he said, and I thought you might go this direction, Troy Palomalu. Mm. Dang, that's oh, that's another good one because yeah, he was growing up. Uh, I wore 43. There you, you know, go. Did all that stuff. Because you and, played defense at first, right? Back in the day? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I played defense and like fullback. So I, I wore 43 <laughs> up until I wore 43 up until my sophomore year of high school. So man, I that, that's another name that just slipped my mind. But I actually got the, you know, the opportunity to meet him uh when I visited SC and it was uh, you know, I was trying so hard not to be starstruck, but it's just so crazy visualizing what he does on the field and then seeing him and meeting him in person. He's such a soft spoken person. So it was crazy, man. Uh, I would say he's he's another guy. I just forgot about him, man. That's it's crazy. I did though. So I I I'm a Steelers fan. So Troy was always a big part of uh, me enjoying the game 20 years ago. So when guys like you and Leatu and I think um, Marshawn Nealon out of Western uh, Michigan, he's a Troy guy. I was sort of surprised that 20 years later he still resonates. And our colleague Bryant McFadden um, went to Florida State, won mm -hmm. two Super Bowls with Troy, and he had Troy in his podcast last year. And Bryant's a, a quiet, soft-spoken guy too. And you know how Troy is. And uh, Bryant pulled out a letter that Troy wrote him 15, 20 years ago about overcoming injury while they were both in the league and, and battling. Mm. And, and BMAC started crying on the podcast. It was such a touching letter from Troy. So Troy seems to be that for everybody. And, um, yeah. man, there is no shame in, in being starstruck beating Troy Palomalu because uh, yeah. uh, I would have been the same way for sure. Uh, all right, let's see here. What else we got? All right, things are getting easy here. These are some uh, social media questions we like to do. Be, uh, Debo doesn't like me to say the social media questions because I'm old, but that's what they're going to be. All right, here we go. We asked these at the combine to a lot of your, a lot of your, uh, a lot of guys that also play offensive line. I want you to build the perfect offensive lineman for me, okay? So past or present, any player, and if you want to double up on players, you can do that. That's fine too. Perfect size. Tyron Smith. Oh, that's a good one. Nastiness. Pene. Oh, Pene Sewell. Oh, run blocking. I'll go with my, like my mentor, uh, Joe Staley. Oh, love it. Yeah. Joe Staley. Pass blocking. Trent. Trent Williams. And finally, uh, overall IQ. Probably Jason Kelsey. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's actually that's maybe one of the best ones we had. All right, one last thing, and then we'll get you out of here on this, Troy. We're gonna play the offensive line game. I'm gonna give you two players. You tell me which one you want to keep, and we're gonna go down the list. It's gonna get harder. Damn. All right. <laughs> this is like something they do on TikTok. I don't know. I don't have TikTok. Okay. All right, here we go. Teron Armstead or Ronnie Stanley? Ronnie Stanley. Ronnie Stanley or Tristan Wirfs? Tristan Wirfs. Tristan Wirfs or Rashawn Slater? Rashawn Slater. Oh, I love it. All right, here we go. It's going to get tough right here. Rashawn Slater or Panay Sewell? 
Rashawn Slater. Oh, oh, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. All right. Rashawn Slater, Lane Johnson. Lane. Nice. Lane oh, Johnson or Laramie Tunsil? Laramie Tunsil. Oh, my gosh. These are hard. Yeah, here we go. Laramie Tunsil or Christian Derrissaw? <laughs> See, I watch a lot of these guys, so it's hard. Uh, personally, I'm going to go Christian Derrissaw. Oh, I love it. Our yeah. guy Rick Spielman drafted Christian Derrissaw a few years ago. All right. I think you know how this is going to end. See what you got here. Christian Derrissaw or Trent Williams? Trent Williams. Yeah, he didn't hesitate. It's, it's Most guys didn't hesitate. Yeah. All right. Damn, that was difficult. <laughs> you did good. Uh, Troy, that's all I got, man. I appreciate your time. I thank you for taking some time with us. I hope you enjoy your time off before things get hectic. Enjoy your video games, and good luck. You're going to be awesome next year. I can't wait to watch you. Troy Fatanu, thank you very much. Thank you guys for having me.